Ang susunod na programa ay nagpapatuloy dahil sa inyong pagmamahal, donasyon at kaloob sa Greg Durante Ministries. Well, I want to share some things with you today. Uh, I want to talk about something that maybe you've talked about before. I'm sure you have. Uh, we talk about being saved. We talk about the blessing of God. We talk, but how do we get them all? You know, how, how do we access some things? How, how do we get the blessing of God into our lives? Because I know there's people out there that say, well, I prayed, nothing happened, or this, that. I know there's all... So, uh, so I want to talk to you about, about a Bible principle today uh, that is called, uh, God calls it this himself, calling things that are not as though they were. Amen. You know, one of the things we find out as, as we walk with the Lord and as we study the Word of God, we find out um, that it's very important what we say and how we say it. Words have power. And words are faith containers. Amen. You know, we have faith in our heart, but the Bible teaches us that our faith is released by our words. And so uh, we're going to talk about some things. And I heard uh, when, uh, when uh, Bishop was praying earlier, I heard him mention the name of Abraham. You know, in the scripture... Abraham is called the father of faith. And uh, so if we're going to walk by faith, we're going to learn a lot of things by looking at what Abraham did and what God did with him. So let's just pray real quickly, and then we're going to get into this message. And I just am believing that it's going to be something that will benefit you today. Father, we thank you for your word. And so today, Lord, we just ask by your spirit that you would minister to us and through us. And Lord, you would open our hearts to receive that we might receive revelation and understanding. Lord, that we can grow in faith and learn how to exercise our faith. That we might have successful, strong, blessed lives. And we just praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well... You know this. You know that the scripture says that the word is the seed. I want you to just turn with me, if you would. We're going to start right out. I want to look at a few things in Genesis. So go with me, if you have your Bibles, go with me to Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to go to verse 29. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29. Right away, in the very beginning of the scripture, in the Garden of Eden, God mentions seed. He says in verse 29, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. So right here, God introduces seed. Well, then if we go on down, we'll go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And, of course, this is a very famous scripture because this is a prophecy about Jesus. But in Genesis 3, 15, immediately after Adam and Eve have sinned, God says to Eve, he, uh, he says in verse 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman. He's speaking to the serpent or to the devil. Between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Well, as Christians, we know that he is prophesying of Jesus, of the Messiah, the seed of Abraham. But you notice that that word seed, here we have that seed principle again. And then if we go over to Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22, 
and this is the episode immediately after the flood, and Noah has just gotten off the boat, off the ark, and God is speaking to him. And of course, he says in verse 22, he says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest. Now, we can stop right there. We don't need to talk about the rest, except that I want to mention one thing. You know, there are a lot of, of, uh, of folks, scientists and, and environmentalists and global warming people that are very concerned about climate change. Well, God already told us a thousand years ago, don't worry about it, because he says as long as the earth remains, there's always going to be summer and winter. So don't get so nervous about it. That's all I'm going to say. Because God's already covered it. He said winter's going to come, summer's going to come, winter's going to come. Just relax. Okay. But I want you to notice that the first thing that God reminded Noah of was seed time and harvest. If you will study the Bible, you will find that the principle of sowing and reaping, seed time and harvest, is the principle of the whole scripture. Jesus is even referred to in John chapter 12. Jesus is talking to him about himself, and he says in the 24th verse, he says, except a seed fall into the ground and die. He's talking about himself. Jesus regarded himself as the seed. If you read after the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the resurrection chapter there, you will discover that Paul again talks about the seed and the seed being raised up. And there, here he's talking about us being seeds. Our body is sowed a natural seed. It's raised up a spiritual seed. But this principle of sowing and reaping, when it comes to our finances and our blessing, God tells you it operates on the principle of seed time and harvest. Well, now we're going to follow the life of Abraham a little bit. And uh, we're going to find out some things. One of the things, to lay out a little foundation for this, um, Jesus said this in Mark chapter 4, verse 14. There's an episode, the sower of the seed. And Jesus said, the sower goes out to sow the seed. But then when he, when he elaborates for his disciples, he said, the seed is the word. So very specifically, God has said that when you receive the word of God, you are receiving the divine seed into your life. That means that your heart, your spirit, see, you're created in the image of God. So that means that someplace, somehow, you're a spiritual being because God's a spirit. And, and so your heart becomes the soil. And the seed is planted in the soil of our hearts. Jesus said the sower goes out to sow the seed. He said the seed is the word. Now let's track this thing a little bit farther. Uh, do you know this, that the seed always has authority over the soil? Listen to this. There's a little phrase that I've used over the years, and that is, that the natural often illustrates the supernatural. In other words, we can find natural things in life that illustrate the things of God. So when I talk about seed as a farmer, that's a very natural thing, but it's the same way that God sows his word into our life, and if we'll allow this word to grow, it will produce in our lives what we need. It will produce a crop of righteousness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Panginoon, salamat po 
sa lahat ng biyaya mo, Panginoon, at kami ay na, naririto ngayon sa biyaya ng Diyos sa gawain ito, Panginoon, ay patuloy nga po kaming pinagpapala at ang aking mga anak, manugang, Panginoon, mga apo, ay nandi dito po at naglilingkod, Panginoon. Salamat po sa iyo, O Diyos, sapagkat hindi mo kami pinabayaan maging sa aking karamdaman. Ako'y pinagaling mo lubos, Panginoon. Salamat po ng maraming marami sa iyo, O Diyos. At anuman po ang hinihiling ko po sa iyo ay pinagkakalob nga kayo. Kaya kayo po na nakikinig at nanonood, amin po kayong inaanyayahan na patuloy rin po kayong dumalo sa gawain at patuloy rin po kayong manalig sa Panginoong Heso Kristo. Siya po ang ating kaligtasan at ang pagkakaloob po ay tunay nga pong pagpapala para sa ating lahat. Salamat po sa Diyos, sa Kanyang papuri parangal at narito po kami. Kami po ay isang pamilya. Salamat po to God, glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Naalala ko ang Heaven's Economy at Heaven's Economic. Ang Diyos ay sumumpa sa kanyang sarili dahil wala namang hihigit pa sa kanya na habang ang araw at araw at ang lupa ay lupa, habang ang gabi ay gabi, magpapatuloy ito. At ang pagdaloy ng kasaganaan ay nasa pagtatanim. It is in sowing that there will be reaping. It is in planting that there will be harvest. And it is in giving that there will be receiving. So tat sa tatlong ito, planting, sowing, giving. Giving, sowing, planting. Planting, sowing, giving. Kaya sa pagkakataong ito, nais kong kayo ay i-challenge para maging financial partner ng gawain ito ng Panginoon. At sa inyong ipagkakaloob na anumang halaga, Meron akong inihanda ang dalawang CD uh, teaching ko at isang refrigerator magnet na may Word of God. Alinman dito sa dalawa as per your request as you deposit to the bank account of this ministry ay ipadadala ko po agad dito sa inyo. Kaya't sa inyo pong may pagkakaloob, ako'y dadalangin para sa katiyakan ng inyong pag-aani sa inyong paggapas at sa inyong pagtanggap. Aking Ama, salamat po sa iyong salita. Salamat po at hinding-hindi kami magkukulang habang tuloy-tuloy ang aming pagtatanim at aming pagbibigay. Kaya pagpalain mo ang bawat isa sapagkat sila ay napakaunlad at napakaalab at walang tigil sa pagtatanim at sa pagbibigay. Pagpalain mo sila at maranasan nila ang kaibang daloy ng pagwelta ng pagpapala sa kanila at maranasan nila ang material at pinansyal na kakaibang kasaganaan sa kanilang kamay at sa kanilang buhay at sambahayan. Sa makapangyarihang pangalan ni Jesus, maganap at mangyari ang aking pinahayag na ito sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. It will produce the promises of God because the word is the seed. Now, one of the things you need to understand about this is that the seed always has authority over the ground. You know, I came from the Midwest in America. In the Med Midwest of America, we grow two major crops, corn and soybeans. Miles and miles of corn and miles and miles of soybeans. Well, if you put corn in the ground, the earth can't decide to raise soybeans. If you sow corn, you're going to get corn. If you sow soybeans, you're going to get soybeans. If you plant cucumbers, uh, you're not going to get banana trees. <laughs> You're going to get cucumbers, isn't that right? Because the soil, now the soil can maximize the crop or it can minimize the crop, but the soil can't change the crop. In other words, if you will reap 
receive into the soil of your heart what God puts in there, it will begin to produce exactly what God wants. Now, you can help it produce more or you can hinder it and produce less, but it's going to be what it's going to be because the seed has dominion over the soil. The seed has the authority. So, today, uh, though, I want to look at a, a Bible principle that is quite important here. You know, there's a lot of people that, that uh, kind of knock the word of faith message, the preaching of faith from the Bible. Some people will come along and say, well, I don't believe that. Well, the problem is they don't understand it. You see, because when understanding comes, faith will rise in your heart. But Jesus said this again, the sower of the seed. Uh, Jesus said, when we don't understand, this is in Mark chapter 4 and the 15th verse. He said, when people hear the word but they don't understand it, the thief comes immediately to steal it. See, Jesus said Satan himself would show up to steal the word because of what? The word is the supernatural seed. When we don't, un people say, well, they tried that faith stuff. I got news for you. You don't try faith. You do faith. I have become a much stronger faith preacher than I used to be. You know why? Because I've lived long enough to know that it works. Well, you know, sometimes when you're young, you haven't lived long enough, you kind of got to have a little more life to know if it's really working or not. But I just turned, we celebrated my birthday, I just turned 75 years old, and I can look behind me and see how God has made my faith work. My faith has produced. I've believed God, I've walked with God, I've been obedient to God, Glory and I, my wife, and God has been good to us, and his word has come to pass in our lives. You see, the seed has produced a crop. And so that gives me confidence. As the years go by, my confidence grows because I've... And, and you know, uh, Sister Imelda was sharing her testimony. Isn't that a wonderful testimony? I, I'm just thrilled by it. But you know what? Over the years, I, I've heard testimonies enough, and I've experienced testimonies so that I know that it's absolutely true. You see, my wife and I have had wonderful experiences of health, miraculous healing, deliverance of our kids. God has promised us that if you give, it'll be given unto you, Presta. And, and we've looked over the years and watched God supernaturally provide for us when there was no source. And yet we look back and realize that God supplied. And, and it was good. Life has been good. Now... Just because life is good doesn't mean that you don't have to use your faith. But here's the good thing about it. Faith, the Bible says, faith pleases God. You know, I'll just take a little side trip here. You know, we're very success-oriented. And so as humans, we think that we haven't pleased God unless we got exactly the right answer. We start out to believe God, and if it doesn't turn out just right, then we think we've failed. But you know, God is not concerned how it turns out. He's concerned whether you even believe him or not. You see, he said, if you believe me, I'll take care of the rest. So if you even start out to walk by faith, you're already pleasing God. Because he sent Jesus to make up the difference anyway. Do you understand that? You know, you're not saved on how good you are. You're not even saved on how good you are at believing God. You're not saved by how good you walk by faith. You're saved because you trusted in Jesus. Whether all of this other little stuff turns out great or not, you pleased God because you were just willing to even believe him at all. That's pleasing to God. 
So sometimes we have to quit being, you know, our faith starts to work better when we quit being hard on ourselves and just walk by faith. Did you hear that? Sometimes I found out as I got old, you just need to relax. Just relax and believe God and go on with life. Glory to God. Praise God. Okay. Let's get into this before I run out of time, huh? So, faith doesn't work when you try it. Faith works when you do it. See, Faith works for doers. That's why the Bible says, don't just be a hearer, be a doer of the word. Just begin to do it and go on with it as best you can because the Spirit of God will help you to mature and grow and develop and your faith will get stronger and more successful as time goes on. Uh, you know, some people are so worried about getting older, but I got news for you. Spiritually, as you get older, you grow stronger. You know, and, and life looks better and you trust God more. There, there, it's not a drawback to be older. Say amen, somebody. Amen. amen. <laughs> but see, the devil comes along. Jesus says it's the thief or the, or the Satan comes to steal the word immediately. But the only thing the devil can do is make you think it's not working. You see, he has got to convince you that it's not working because if it's not working and if he convinces you, then you'll quit believing God. See, Miss Imelda was sharing a testimony and she said she made a decision to trust God and to have a good attitude and to walk by faith. But see, the enemy was giving her pain because he wanted to convince her that this thing was going to fail. And she refused to be convinced. The devil is going to come and steal the word by convincing you that it's not working. I know I had a good friend, a preacher friend of mine, and, and he, I, he said the devil would always come to him and say, yeah, you did it the last time, and God blessed you that time, and he blessed, but not this time. See, you might have gotten blessed last time, you might have gotten healed last time. You might have got your rent paid last time, but not this time. Not this time. And so he put on a, a sign on his desk that just says, I, get, I win every time. <laughs> but, you know, we need to remember that. Every time. God is on our side. Listen. We need to realize that the word of God is the incorruptible seed. We've been talking about seed. Now, natural seed can be good, can be bad, can be whatever, but the Word of God is an incorruptible seed. In other words, if you allow it to work in your life, it will always accomplish exactly what God sent it to accomplish. He said, my word does not return void, but accomplishes that for which it was sent. It's the incorruptible seed. And so let's turn over to Romans chapter 4, and we're going to take a look at what Paul said about Abraham. Romans chapter 4, and we're going to go down and maybe start around the 13th verse. You see, Abraham got a promise from God. Abraham's, uh, God said to Abraham, I am going to make of you a great nation. And there were many other things he promised Abraham. And look at this verse 13 of, of chapter 4. For the promise to Abraham or to his descendants that he would inherit the world was not through the law, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. You see, when we begin to, when we receive Jesus by faith, when we walk by faith, there is a right standing with God that comes. We, get, we have perfect right standing with God as though we'd never made a mistake in our life. Do you know that? When you receive Christ as your Savior, the Bible says if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old man passed away. You're a new person in Christ. 
And this new person, whether your mind realizes it or not, has perfect right standing with God. We stand in God's presence as though we never made a mistake in our lives. That's the way God sees us. Why? Because he put all the mistakes, which is our sin, he put that all under the blood of Jesus. It's all taken care of. But you know, most of us have a hard time really understanding that. That we have perfect, you know, if you had a perfect relationship with God, what would you do? What would you say? How would you act? If you and God were just this close, if you and God were as close as God the Father is with Jesus, how would you act? How would you talk? How would you think? Well, that's exactly where you are, but this is a big challenge for us. This is a big challenge for us. That's why the Bible tells us to renew our minds. But look at Abraham. Abraham, the promise of God didn't come because Abraham was perfect, but it came through the right standing that he had because he believed God. And so Abraham was called the father of faith. He had faith in the promises of God or he had faith in the word of God. And so uh, we read down in the 16th and 17th verse, it talks about faith, therefore it is of faith, verse 16, that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to everybody. See, we can all receive the blessing of God because we're on all, all on equal footing because it's not by our performance, by, but it's by what we believe. It's by faith. See, I've told people, I worked for years in a drug recovery. I would teach every week. Well, you know, sometimes in a rehabilitation place or a drug recovery place, there are a lot of people that have had very poor success in life for one reason or another. You know, they've just ended up upside down in life. And uh, I said, you know, a lot of us are not very good performers. If we had to perform for our salvation, we'd be left out. Thank, so in order to make it equal, you know, I've said this. I said some people are better at performing than others. Some people seem to know how to do the right things, say, say the right things. Uh, they know how to be in the right place at the right time. A and some of us aren't too good at it. And so I said to make it all equal for everybody, God doesn't judge by performance. Performance has nothing to do with it. What, what is the key? It's faith. The just shall live by faith. Aren't you glad that the Bible doesn't say the just shall live by your performance? Because the truth is, when it comes to life, some of us are not very good performers. Amen. There's another one. You may as well say amen. Like Brother Hagin used to say, either say amen or oh me. <laughs> uh, because it's true. Okay. So here we have Abraham. And Abraham is called the father of faith. Now verse 17, I want you to see this. Verse 17, God said to Abraham, it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. And then it describes God a little bit. It says that God is the one who gives life to the dead, and he calls those things that do not exist as though they did. Or the scripture they're showing you right now, it says calls things into existence that do not exist. So ka na ba sa iyong mga napapanood ng mga negatibo at pangit na balita? Narito ang alternatibo, ang Great Day to Live na mapapanood sa Beam Channel 31 sa inyong local antenna, mapapanood sa buong Metro Manila at sa buong Pilipinas at sa ilang mga cable operator system na nagdadala ng palatuntunang ito sa pamamagitan ng Trinity Broadcasting Network. Mapapanood nyo po ang ating mga programa lunes hanggang webes alas 9.30 ng gabi at tuwing araw ng biyernes alas 10.30 ng gabi at araw ng sabado alas 11 ng gabi. Nari nyo rin po kami mapanood sa Church Channel via satellite at ilang mga cable operator system sa buong Pilipinas at karating bansa sa Asia 
Lunes hanggang Sabado, sa ganap na alas 12 ng hating gabi, alas 6 ng umaga, alas 12 ng tanghali at alas 6 ng gabi. Ating ipapahayag na si Jesus lamang ang tanging daan tungo sa buhay na walang hanggan at ang aming dala ay laging mabuting balita. You know, there are a lot of things in our lives that we seem to need. Sometimes these things don't seem to exist. But God is the one that can bring things from nowhere to somewhere. But we need to learn how to walk with God and make those principles happen in our lives. And so that is what faith is about. Faith brings salvation into our lives, but faith brings a lot of things into our lives. And God said it past tense, I have made you a father of many nations. Now, at that time, the reason I'm preaching this is because it seems pretty significant because Abraham was 75 years old at that time. I just had my 75th birthday. In fact, we got together and we ate pizza for my birthday. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And, uh, and so God said that I am going to bless you and I'm going to give you a family and, and this family of yours is going to affect the whole world. And, and Abraham's looking at this and saying, I'm 75 years old. Ain't nothing happened yet. What's going to go on? But the Bible says that God told Abraham to leave his nation, leave his family, and go to the place that God showed him. He was talking about the promised land. And, uh, and then he said, I want you to get acquainted with what I have. And I want you to follow closely because you're going to see some principles for faith. In the next few verses, you're going to see some principles of faith. You see, for Abraham, his promised land was actually the land that we now call Israel or Palestine, and it was a natural land. Our promised land is a spiritual land that is mostly described in the New Testament. But, but God said this. He said, these things are written talking about the Old Testament, so that you might learn thereby. And so we need to see what happened to Abraham so that we can learn some things about faith. And so I'm hoping that before we're done in a few minutes, we learn some things about faith. You see, we need to go and walk in our promised land until we see it. You know, a lot of people, the promises of God, for instance, uh, God has promised us divine healing. The Bible says by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. Uh, Jesus himself said, Jesus said, healing is the children's bread. Well, I'm a child of God. That means it's for me, you know. But there are a lot of people... There are a lot of branches of the church that don't even believe in healing. And then there are a lot of people, even in churches like this, that we don't seem to experience healing when we desire it or when we need it. And so uh, uh, people will say, well, I just don't see it. Or they'll say, I don't get it. Or they'll say, you know, I just don't believe that. And you know what happens? They don't experience it. You see, because we're going to live by faith. In order to receive from God, we've got to believe it. If we don't believe it, we can't have it. And he said to Abraham, I want you to walk through the land because everything you see, you can have. That's what he said. That's the principle. He said, if you can see it, you can have it. Go walk in the land. If you can see it, you can have it. We walk in what land? We walk in the New Testament in the light of the gospel. 
and the, but the same principle applies. If we can see it, we can have it. So we need, that's why we go to church. That's why we study the word. That's why preachers preach so that the eyes of our understanding are open so we begin to see it. You know, there's some of us that need to see ourselves healed. There's some of us that need to see ourselves blessed. There's some of us, I got news for you, I've been preaching for a lot of years and I've pastored a lot of years. There's a lot of Christians that can just not see themselves prosperous. They just don't see it. Well, you know what? If you don't see it, you can't have it. So, so what do we have to do? How do you get to see it? That's why God sent preachers. How does faith come? By hearing. And if you don't see it, what does that mean? It means you need to hear it again. And that means you need to hear it again. And that means you need to hear it again until the eyes of your understanding. How about, let's go over to Ephesians. Let's go over to Ephesians because in Ephesians, in the first chapter, it tells us exactly how to pray if we want to see it. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians. And we're going to go down to about the 17th verse. Well, <clears throat> Paul said this. He's praying for the church. And he says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Well, part of wisdom is understanding. The Proverbs said, among, above all things, get understanding. We need to understand where God wants to take us, what he wants to do for us. Don't resist it, don't rebel against it, but understand it. And then the next word is, and revelation in the knowledge of him. What is that word revelation? It means to reveal. See, we need to pray that some things are revealed to us. What happens when something is revealed? You see it. We say in, in the States, we say the light goes on. You guys say that? They go, oh, the light went on. See, when the light goes on, what do you do? You see it. When the room is dark, you don't see it, but you turn the light on, now I see it. Thank, we, need to, we need to have a spirit. The spirit of God needs to reveal till all of a sudden we can say, I get it. I see it. I'm not in doubt and unbelief anymore. I see it. I see healing. I see prosperity. I see salvation. I see deliverance. I see the blessing of God coming upon my family. I see it. See, and when we see it, because God was just described as the one that calls things that don't exist into existence. But let's follow on here a little bit. Let's get back into the scripture and just find out. See, because Abraham is the example. In, in chapter 15, in chapter 15 of Genesis, and in the uh, 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 second, uh, second verse of chapter 15, let me go back there just a little. In chapter 12, God made all these promises. Then in chapter 15, Abraham says in verse 2, he says, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing that I go childless? See, now, God has now, or Abraham, Abram, has now had this promise from God for 10 years. It's been 10 years since God appeared and said, I'm going to bless you, and you're going to have a great family. 10 years have gone by. As far as Abram is concerned, nothing has happened. Not a thing has happened. So he says, Lord, what are you going to do 
in that a guy who is not even from my own body, he's not our child, he's going to inherit all my stuff. What about this? Because you gave me a promise. But see, we, we get it now. Abraham doesn't see it. He still doesn't see it. See, he's looking at the natural. Oftentimes, we look at everything around us, but faith is the ability to call things that are not as though they were. See, call things that we don't see and bring them to this place where we can see them. See, we're very natural-minded. We want to see things with our eyes, with our five senses. But the things of God exist in the realm of the spirit. God is a spirit. And so what does it take to get them from the kingdom of God into this world where we live in our five senses? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The Bible teaches that faith is a supernatural force that comes out of the human heart that has the ability to draw things out of the realm of the spirit into this natural reality where we live. See, in the spirit, there is not one thing that Jesus needs to do for us. If we need healing, Jesus does not have to take one more stripe on his back for our healing. The Bible says salvation is completed. You see, dealing with our sin. Jesus doesn't have to spend one more day in the grave to pay for our sin. Our sin is completely paid for. Amen. But we, in this natural realm, we don't have a comprehension of that. We need to get a revelation of that so that we begin to realize that the things that God has for us belong to us and they can be brought out of that realm of the spirit into this five senses natural realm we live in by our faith. Now, we're going to run out of time, but we're just going to go on. So Abraham was childless. God will give you everything you can see. In 2 Peter, the first chapter, it says that God has given to us, to us already all things that pertain to life and godliness. Well, how much is left out? If he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, if you think about it, that's everything we need. There is no more. Everything we need for our natural life and everything we need to be godly and, and take care of eternity. God has already done it. But somehow, we have to make a demand on what's been done. You know, uh, in, the, in the Philippines... Uh, do you have bank cards? Do people have bank cards? In, in, in the U.S., we call them debit cards or things like that. You have them here? Uh, we used to write checks. People don't write checks so much anymore. But if you have money in your bank account, does the bank automatically send you money? No. What do they do? They wait until you make a demand on the account. See, you will either write a check or you will go to the merchant and you will hand them your bank card and electronically it will make a demand on your account and the need will be met. Amen. Well, it's the same way with God. God doesn't just automatically dump things on us. The good blessings of God come to us as we demand on our heavenly account by faith. You see, we have to learn, to, and that's where faith, that's how we learn to draw on this account. It might be healing, it might be prosperity. Uh, when you got saved, Jesus has provided eternal life for everyone who believes. And the day that you made a demand on that was the day that you got born again. Salvation flowed in your life. You might have been 50 years old. You had never drawn anything, but all of a sudden, one day, by faith, you made a demand on what Jesus did on the cross, and it flowed, and it flowed out of the realm of the Spirit into your natural life, and in a split second, you knew you were born again. 
See, because we made a demand on the account. Well, a lot of people don't demand. Why don't they demand? Because they don't realize that it's laid up for them in heaven. See, we don't realize. We think we have to struggle and perform and be good and do all. Well, all of that is okay, but that isn't how the blessing of God comes. I mean, it's nice to be a good person. It's good to be good. But being good doesn't get the blessing of God for you. Faith gets it. Because there's a lot of good people that die sick. There's a lot of good people that die flat broke, penniless, poor. There's a lot of people that die. There were good people. They die and go to hell. Why? Because they didn't make a demand on what Jesus has done. They haven't drawn on their heavenly account. Glory to God. Okay, so Abraham is 10 years, and then you guys all know the story. We'll shortcut this a little. Abraham gets tired of waiting for God. He doesn't understand yet how it works. And so, you know, he and his wife make an arrangement, and pretty soon he has a baby with the, with the servant girl. And God doesn't talk to him for 13 years. You know why God didn't talk to him for 13 years? Because he left him all alone to raise Ishmael. And, and uh, because 13, in the scripture, the 13 is the year that a young man comes of age. And so he let him raise up. You know, sometimes we'll do, God, do things without faith, and God will just let us work it out until it's behind us. Sometimes... We just have to let things take their course, and then when it's all behind us, then God will show us the next step. When we're trying to do our own thing instead of his thing. Abraham tried to do his own thing, and there was a 13-year gap. You know, there's, there's something to be learned there. If you, don't want, if you don't want to walk by yourself for 13 years, don't, don't go start any deals that God didn't start to tell you. To. Sometimes people get into business. And they get into business with the wrong people. You know, it's hard to get. Sometimes people go off and marry the wrong people. You know, God is in your life. He'll, he'll forgive you. But if you married the wrong person, you may end up working through some stuff that God didn't really mean for you to work through. You know, but you can end up, you might take the, right, uh, the wrong job just because it seems like it might pay more money. Well, I got enough experience in life to know that jobs aren't always what they look like. I mean, people can make you promises, and they don't keep the promises. Uh, you get involved with people that you can't trust, you can't believe. You get involved with people that are ungodly. You got to be careful about jobs. Some things look real good on the surface, but they're designed to lead you away from the Lord. And so we, and this episode with Abraham, 13 years, he spent 13 years, the Lord never talked to him. But let's pick this up again. And so it says, though, that he uh, had the promise 10 years, he still saw himself childless. Then he did this deal with Ishmael, and they worked through that. And then in chapter 17, God appears to Ab Abram again. He, his name at that time was Abram. And God changed his name to Abraham. Now, why did God change his name to Abraham? A lot of you people know, but you need to hear it again. Abraham means father of many nations. And so every time that he gave his name, Abraham was saying what God said. Up to this time, he had said, I am childless. You know, a lot of us go around, and we don't say what God has said. We say what we're thinking or feeling or seeing. I feel sick. Uh, my, I feel penniless. I feel broke. I have no money. 
uh, you know, my family is going haywire, my kids, and we're reciting everything we can see, but we're not saying what God said. What did God say to Abraham? He said, I'm going to bless you and give you a big family. That's what God said 25 years ago. But Abraham wasn't saying it until God changed his name. Now, I want to show you this very quickly. Uh, Abraham means father of nations. And every time that he gave his name or heard somebody call his name, he heard father of nations. Or he said father of nations. Well, how does faith come? How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. That's why it's so important that we say what God says, because even what we say, we have more confidence in what we say than what anybody else says. We listen to ourselves. If we will begin to say it, we will begin to believe it. Have you ever heard the story about the guy who told a lie so many times he began to believe it himself? Have you ever heard about that guy? Yeah, I've met some. I've worked with a guy like that, really, really nice guy, but he would tell tall tales. But he would tell those stories until he started to believe them himself. Well, you know what? That's the negative side of faith. But if we will say what God says, if we begin to agree with the word of God. See, Abraham, by changing his name, God was forcing Abraham to agree with him. Father of many nations. And when he did that, faith began to rise in Abraham's heart. He's created us to have faith. We are, somebody says, well, I just don't have faith like you have faith. Well, that's a bad saying right there. I do have faith because God has created me to be a faith being. Faith comes natural to me. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. Some of us need to say, hey, I'm a believer. And when you feel something going on negative, you just need to say it again. I believe God. I'm a believer. I'm a person of faith. I call things that are not as though they were. Well, I just don't have any money. Well, what are we doing? We're calling what is as though it was. And we need to say, my God will supply all of my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, I don't know how many times in my life I have quoted that scripture to myself. My God will supply my need. My God will supply my need. My God will supply my need. But you know when I say that, you know what I do? I start to believe it. Amen. And when I believe it, what happens? God begins to move on my behalf. Because I'm beginning to believe. Why am I believing it? Because I keep saying it to myself. I, need, I, I don't need to preach it to the whole world. It's me that needs to believe it. And so I say it to myself. My God will supply my need. You know, sometimes when I don't know, I, I've said this. I'm a new creature in Christ. My favorite scripture in the whole Bible is 2 Corinthians 5.17. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. You know, I've had days, and I'll just tell you that, in all the years... I've had days when I felt like the same old person I used to be. I mean, have you ever had a day when you just felt like the same old dumb dodo you always were? Yeah, right? You know, and you didn't even feel, have you ever had a day when you didn't even feel saved? You woke up and it was just one of those days. But I know this, that I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. My God will supply my needs. Well, I have a lot of needs. Well, not too big for God. You know, you say, I need a million peso. Well, that's no big deal to God. A million pesos isn't even a big deal to a politician. It's certainly not a big deal. To, 
Oh, isn't it right? Are the Philippines any different than the U.S.? I mean, uh, you work so hard for 500 pesos. And politicians will spend 5 million pesos without even walking across the street. Isn't that right? Or 10 million or a billion. You know, well, God is bigger than politicians. If the politicians, if the politicians can get a million pesos into their pocket by lunchtime, God can get it in your pocket. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah. But what does it take? It takes us faith, and it's calling things that are not as though they were. Regardless of what it looks like, you know, what it feels like, anything else. Abraham went 24 years. You can figure it out in the Bible. He went 24 years after God gave him the promise, and nothing happened. When he started saying what God said, father of many nations, when he started saying what God said, baby Isaac was born within one year. You see, I'm going to say something for you to take home and think about today. If you will say what God says, God will do what you say. If you will say what God says, God will do what you say. But see, it's, it's a challenge because we are so tempted to say everything else. We're so tempted to give the evil report. We're so tempted to tell people how bad it is. You know, there's an event going on at the church, but I can't go because I haven't got any money. Well, do you suppose that God wants you to be involved with the activities of the church? Who is it that's trying to keep you from going to the, the events? It's not God, it's the devil. How does he do it? By cutting off your cash. Because if you haven't got any money, you'll sit at home. But God said, if you would be begin to believe, my God will supply all of your needs. Okay. My God. What is that? That's calling things that are not as though they were. See, I still don't have the money in my pocket, but I'm beginning to talk like it. I'm going to go. My God's going to supply my need. We are going to get a different car. You know what I've done over the years? I've said, I'm going to go to the Philippines and preach. I believe God wants I've been eight times, yeah, eight times, I think, in India. And I've spent quite a bit. And, and, and India is an expensive place to travel and preach for several reasons. But you know, God has always supplied because he's the one who put it in my heart. How does the devil keep me from going? He says, you haven't got any money. How are you going to pay for an airline? But you know what? If God says go, same as Abraham. God said, you're going to have a baby. Abraham was 100 years old. His wife was 90. But God said it's going to happen. If God said, I'll supply all of your need according to my riches in glory, he's going to do it. Yes. But it's up to us to begin to believe it. And how do we believe it? We believe it by saying it. My God will supply my need. Uh, first thing, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the... You know, some of us need to just tell ourselves we're blessed. Ang natapos na palatuntunan ay nagpapatuloy dahil sa inyong pagmamahal kaloob at donasyon sa Greg Durante Ministries. Para po sa pagpapatuloy ng programang ito, kailangan po namin ang inyong panalangin at pinansyal na suporta sa bawat kaloob ng inyong ipapadala, anuman ang halaga. Bibigyan po namin kayo ng anointing oil bilang pasasalamat sa inyong pagtulong at pagsuporta sa Greg Durante Ministries.